Hey there, in this lesson we're going to talk about variables and data types. First we need a class. I'm going to hover my mouse over here on Java Basics, right click it, go to New, and click on Class. Now we're going to get into all types of details about what a class is later on in the course, uh, so don't worry about that for now, but we're going to call this class Variables, because that's what we're going to be learning about. And just a naming convention here, the first letter of a class should be capital. All right, that's just a standard that everybody follows that you'll see in the industry. So make sure you leave all your class names with the first letter as capital. And just check this thing right here. This is the main method that we need for the program to run successfully. Uh, and we're going to get into details of what all those, what all these keywords such as static and void and you know public mean later on. But for now, you can ignore them and just take them for granted. And every th all the code that we're going to write in the next few lessons is going to be inside of these brackets. The Java interpreter needs this main method to run the program. So inside of this main method, we're going to write all of our code. So let's start with variables. A variable in computer programming is a place where you can save data. All right? So for example, I can have a variable called x. Okay? And I can even give it some value, for example, 4. This is just like grade school when you had an equation such as 2 plus x or 4 plus x or, you know, these are uh, simple equations, x plus 7. Every Java program starts from the main method and it goes line by line executing each line of instruction. So when it gets to here, it sees that there is a variable x and its value is 4. So anything that follows, whenever, wherever it sees x, the computer is going to know that, hey, this is, this is actually equal to 4. So the first instruction here, 2 plus 4, this, equal, this is going to equal 6. This right here is going to equal 8. This right here is going to equal the number 11. Now the reason why they call it variable and nothing else is because variables can be changed. So it's a, it's a variable value that goes in it. So I can change what x equals on this line. And all code that follows after this is going to think of x to be the value 3. All right, it's, it's not going to consider x to be the value 4 because we've changed it. That's the idea, that's the reasoning behind why they call it a variable is because guess what? The data can vary depending on what you assign it. So another important thing to keep in mind is this equal sign. This is actually referred to as an assignment operator. Now in basic math class, you may have thought of it as equality when you're checking to see if two things are equal. Well, in computer programming, it's different. One equal sign right here. This means we are assigning, okay? So here we are assigning the number four to this variable x. Down here we are assigning, we're assigning the, the number three to this variable x. Okay, so this is assignment, keep that in mind. I can assign a new variable and give it the, the number 49. I'm assigning it using this equal sign. Now, of course, this is not valid Java code. As you can see, there are errors. And I'm just explaining to you how variables work. So let's fix these problems. I'm going to get rid of all this code. And let's go to the basic variable assignment here. We, are, uh, we have a variable called x, and we're trying to assign the number 4. Hover your mouse over this x, and it's saying syntax error, insert, semicolon. So every Java statement needs to end with a semicolon. So that's fixed. Cool. Now hover your mouse again over this error and it's saying x cannot be resolved to a variable. All right, so it does not, it does not yet consider this as a variable. And the reason is it's not declared yet. This variable x has not been declared yet. Declaration is done by mentioning the type of data that's going to go in here. And that's referred to as a data type. A data type is exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's basically specifying what kind of data goes into something. And this variable, it's not defined until we specify the, the data type. So I can say that this variable is capable of storing integer data. So we're specifying the data type for x. It's going to be int. Int is a special keyword that basically means numbers. If we want to put numbers into x, we need to specify the data type to be int. Now, it should be just fine. I can give x the value of anything I want, all right? And it's not going to error out. So this is very important. We're declaring, we're declaring the variable here, and over here we are assigning the variable. Very important to keep in mind. And now I could just print 
as you saw in the previous lesson, we can print by doing uh, system.out.println. I can print the value x. And let's hit the play button and notice that 34 gets printed. Now again, I can change the value of x to be whatever I want. Uh, as long as it's of type integer, I can give it that value. So I'm going to give it the value 23 now. Okay, and now if I print, let's copy that and paste it down here and run the program. Notice that it first prints 34 because over here the values, the value of x was 34, right? And then down here, the value has changed. It's, it's been changed to 23 because this line comes first. So it's going line by line. Uh, over here, it's declaring the variable. Over here, it's assigning the variable to a value. And over here, it's printing it. And over here, it's changing uh, by assigning something else to x, and it's printing that. Now, there are other types of data. Right now, you just saw integer. There are other types of data. For example, let's say if you want to store words or sentences. For that, there is something called string. String is a data type used to store words, sentences, and sequence of characters. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give this variable the name words, right? We can call variables anything we want. And the data type is string. So I've defined, a, I've declared a variable called words of type string. Now only strings can go into words. I cannot, I cannot give, for example, the number 20 because guess what? This is actually not a string. Hover your mouse here, and it's saying type mismatch, cannot convert int to string. So the only kind of data that can go into words is stuff that has that has uh, double quotes around it, okay? And if you have words, for example, this is a sentence. If you have stuff like this, um, those that's the only kind of data that can go into a variable of type string. Okay. Now I can't assign x to be uh, a sentence like this. If I try to do that, it's going to complain. It's going to let's hover our mouse here, and it's saying type mismatch cannot convert string to int because guess what? X can only contain integer data. It can only contain numbers, and we're trying to assign a string value. So uh, that's obviously illegal. We can't do that. So I'm just going to give some number here, and that's going to fix that problem. So now, just like we printed numbers, I can print, I can print words to the screen, of course, like we did in the previous lesson. And I, instead of, you know, writing a string like this uh, with with uh, double quotes, I could just reference the variable that contains a string, and that's called words. And let's hit the play button and notice that it's printing as expected. So three important things you learned in this lesson. One is the uh, code is executed line by line, all right, line by line sequentially from top to bottom. Another thing is we have to declare the variables with a data type, okay? So here's the data type. Uh, this is a data type. And the name of the variable is this right here, x. Words is another name of the variable. Um, and then we can change we can change the data that goes in, into the variables. So over here, I'm saying x is equal to 34. And a little bit of code later, we're actually changing that to this number right here. Another thing to keep in mind is that variables must have uh, letters. They, they, it must start with letters. So for example, we have this variable called words. Um, I can change this to have numbers as well. This is still a valid variable declaration. This is still a valid variable. But as soon as, as, soon as I try to put some, something other than a letter in the beginning, now this is an illegal variable name. We can't have any other character except for letters in the beginning, okay? So let me get rid of that. And we can't have any, any creative uh, syntax like this. This is also not a variable. We can't have these special characters. It needs to be either letters or numbers, and that's what makes a variable legal. So of course, this is given an error because over here it's saying words cannot be resolved to a variable because we haven't defined words. Well, yes, we haven't. We've defined this silly looking variable uh, and words no longer exist. So let me fix this. And now words does exist and we can use it later on in our code. Now, just a few more minor details about variables. There are two steps, the declaration and here we are assigning it. So you can combine both of these, the declaration of the variable as well as the assignment of the variable on the same line. 
So the way to do that is I could just get rid of all of this and just declare it as well as assign it on the same line. All right. Let me do the same thing for words. So we get rid of this code down here and we put an equal sign between. So again, the equal sign is assigning what's on the right to the variable on the left. All right. So this is declaration and assignment going on in one statement. Over here, this is just an assignment. We don't need to declare x again. We've already declared it up here. Okay? We've already declared that this is a variable of type integer and we're not going to do that again. Even though we assigned it up here, we can reassign it to something else, but declaration is not required here because the computer already understands that x is supposed to store integer data. Another thing I want to cover is operators. Certain data types support operators. Uh, for example, if I wanted to print, let me just make some room here and create another uh, print line statement. And by the way, I'm using a shortcut that I'll go over later how to, instead of typing system.out.println, I use a keyboard shortcut that uh, wrote this entire verbose statement. But anyway, I'm going to print the variable x plus 4. Now this plus sign is actually an operator that is supported by this data type, okay? Uh, I, and it, it does exactly what it sounds like. We are adding the number 4 to whatever is inside of x. And at this point, what's inside of x? That's this guy right here, 234. So I expect this to be printed 238. So let's uh, hit the play button here. And notice after, after it prints 34, from this statement, x value has changed, and then we print 234 plus 4 right here. That's why it's 238. All right, and then we're printing 234, and you know the rest you're already aware. So certain data types have uh, operators. So I have the plus operator. I can minus it here. That's also supported by this integer data type. Um, I can divide, for example, um, and I can multiply. The basic math operations, because guess what? This data type is supposed to store numbers. So int, of course, supports all of these different operators. Now the string data type, the string also has certain operators. So I can, for example, add a statement here saying this is some more words. And let me fix my English. These are some more words, okay? So now if we hit the run button, notice that it uh, appended to the existing sentence, this right here, using this plus operator. Okay, so we are appending when it comes to strings. Now, what addition does with integer is it's going to act like a calculator. We are, we are adding numbers. Here, we are, when we use the plus sign, we are appending extra words to the end of uh, a particular string, right? because this is the string data type. It supports the plus sign, but it does something completely different than uh, integer addition. Okay, We looked at in integers, we are able to add, subtract, multiply. So let's try to subtract using the minus sign. Notice this is not supported. If you hover your mouse here, it's saying the operator minus is undefined for the argument type string. Okay, So what it's saying is this data type string does not support this particular operator. All right, And there's plenty more we'll learn about strings in the coming lessons. But I just wanted to show you that these operators can be used and certain data types support certain kinds of operations. So we looked at the integer data type, we looked at the string data type, and we're going to continue this journey to learn more data types in the coming lessons. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.